at you with the with uh, the Gummer Avatar mascot. We have the, the Summer Avatar a mascot awards. It's a 3D sculpted. Hmm. Aha, so this is one of their designs, too. I've seen one walking around. You recognize this uh, one? Oh, yeah, she's everywhere. Yeah, she looks like Eve, doesn't she? Mac is uh, showing off there, so I can, can kick around and do stuff. Hmm. Group, I remember these guys. They have the Amigo Worlds, which are sort of a friendly place to hang out. They've been specializing in, like, from what I remember, um, very cool social worlds. So they got some dinosaurs up on the in the booth here. to the future in Jurassic Park. Let's see what that takes us. Looks like they got Dinosaur Land here. They're working on bringing in the dinosaurs into virtual space so we can hang out in these worlds and these creatures. Yeah, looks like fun. Kinds of scintillating conversation here. Of course, that's probably not why you go there. There's the comet coming in the background. <laughs> Looks like um, some space stuff over here. Oh boy, a tank. Uh -huh. Let's take a peek at which aerospace company this belongs to. Pacific Northwest National Laboratories, operated by by Battelle for the U.S. Department of Energy. Uh -huh. I'll join them. Yeah, I got to you a few times. I noticed uh, some people have the same bot as you. They must be the enforcers. The uh... uh, <laughs> seemed like a good idea at the time, huh? Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Well, I've got uh, I've got it all set up and recorded in recorded high res. So I'll follow you around a little bit. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Uh, no, I've got a full motion video. Yeah. So let me uh, let me see where you are, and uh, I'll join you. Yeah, you're getting still frames, right? There we go. Boy, there's a lot of people here. This is a big photograph, huh? Galen's here? Wow, wow, that's impressive. That's uh, looks like a, there's a whole party here. Is she? Ah, what's the photo for? For the uh, are you taking the picture? Or? Wow, this is the information booth area. This must be the beam in zone. That's unbelievable. Number of people. Ah, <laughs> anti Galen. got a um, <clears throat> schedule somebody asks when's it starting I told you. there's Bruce in center stage the creator of this event DigiGardener on the screen is another a zone in the world's um, countdown for what? Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, this is the official opening of Avatars ninety eight at eleven PM. It's T.
beginning of the show. sitting at his computer over in his house here in Boulder Creek, live from the Digital Garden. Stuart Gold right behind Bruce to the right. Quite exciting. It's looking at a bunch of guys staring at a TV, a, v, a video screen, huh?
Bruce in his avatar and the live big video screen behind. The little kid in the screen there. Official start. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Just wave to the camera.
things are about to get underway. Corbett, the science writer at the Cornell Theory Center, coming to you today from Ithaca, New York, in upstate New York. I will be telling you a bit about our plans to launch a virtual science center in Active Worlds. And here's your audience. <laughs> People floating around, generally watching. This is the kind of lecture that in your audience. Before we get going, let's get some ground rules for the session. I'm going to type in chunks of text and short blocks. We get about 220 characters a chat line, and sometimes we'll take more than one to finish a thought. And then uh, Bruce has come in. Hello, Margaret Corbett. She's going to say, Hi, Bruce. Thanks for stopping by. That's the Queen Bee. Please log your chat. Done. Hail Bop has arrived. Hello, all. I don't know where Hail Bop is. Yeah. All right. Bonnie's doing the behind the scenes slideshow here for this little event. Let's maximize our screen area. No, I've got a, I'm another wizard. She's the Queen Bee from Cornell on the lecture podium with the likelihood of like this great audience here. <laughs> there are four panels behind me with images. The three of your right have slides on them that will change during my talk, so I think it will work best if I go through the content of three slides at a time. There are four panels behind me with images. The three on your right have slides on them, which will change. I think it worked best. Once I am done telling you about these topics, I will ask you at least one question. Then it's your turn to chime in. We'll let your comments and questions accumulate in the chat box, and then I will respond. Um, then we'll change the slides and continue on with the talk. I hope you will have lots of ideas to share or questions to ask as we go along. see how it works. I'm sure they thought about it. Then we'll change the slides. However, it's really easy to digress on technical issues, so I want to ask you to contact us by email with details after the session. That way we can try and keep on track for our time slot. Right, right. However, so I have put up a series of web pages with slides. You can put them on your web window by clicking on the right hand web link object at the side of the speakers. Okay, well let's try. If you are going to use these slides, please load the first page now. How about if you jump or wave once you've got the page loaded? These are the people. Loading in the page. Do they look like they're about to jump? No. I think they have to know where exactly to click. Oh, there's a wave. If you're, you're going to use these slides, please load them now. Yes. Now oh, there's another wave. People are loading in their slides here. Okay, let's see what we got here. No, that's the big board. I guess I didn't click right yet. Let's see. We got page loaded. Where do we click? a virtual 
they're sliding. So is that what we load in? MB. It's one of these. I mean, we must click one of these here. She's looking at her watch. I know, but I, I, it hasn't changed. My web window is just a big board. And I'm just trying to see. If you're going to use these slides, please load load the first page now. How about if you jump away one? Okay, well, where do you click, though? Where do you click to load the page? the other pod. And I'm getting a protein folding page. It's like you cannot click any of the things behind her in here. Pods are silver web links on a silver web links on either side of the page. Tree? What tree? This thing? Okay. Oh, I see. The Virtual Science Center. Okay, that should be give our teach pods of server web links at the either side of the page. Thanks, Queen Bee. Okay. The Virtual Science Center. And there we go. Exploring science in a new dimension. A virtual science center founded in a parallel dimension, built by and for the worldwide a community of avatars or virtual beings. A place where you can swing on a star or explore the atomic maze of a complex molecule. A science center will be a meeting place, a workplace, and a showcase for the power of the internet as a medium for informal science education. Developed in active ways using Wintel servers. Okay. So, it's uh, the Cornell Theory Center. Cornell's high-performance computing and communication resources coordinating the effort to develop science centers so that the teens and young adults who inhabit Alpha World can experience a world that focuses on leading-edge science and technology. So, it's Lily. She's a science writer and mistress of a new world. Margaret Corbett. Tony shows up. Hi, Bonnie. Looks like I'm in. Tony DeVarco. Tony T O N Y D E V A S O. Okay. CDC is the High Performance Computing and Communications Center at Cornell University. We specialize in simulations of systems ranging from the universe to molecules, thus the name theory. Concession stand is open. Hot dog is only a dollar. Big lines forming. We have superconducting systems and we do scientific visualization. We use an immersive cave-like environment and lots of desktop resources for imaging. That's how I got hooked on 3D. Caves. As a science writer, I tell stories about the research that people do using our resources. Researchers see 3D files, and when the web came along, I jumped at the chance to share these files with the general audience. Hmm. 
my logic, if a picture is worth a thousand words, then 3D files immediately priceless. Priceless. I expanded this quest, not a totally satisfying one yet, of course, to virtual worlds. Announcement: AB Radio is now broadcasting. Click on the microphone at GZ. Queen Bee. Next, I'm working with a small team of undergraduate programmers and designers to create a virtual science center. We have a lot of help from the folks with the contact consortium and the Circle of Fire. Call our World Science Center our World Science Center. You can see it in the list now, but we aren't open for business yet. You can read about it on our website. is cave-like environment. Somebody wants to know what a cave is. What is the primary goal of your program? changing now, the body's changing them, as our AV projectionist with the mostest. Why are you exclusively using undergrads? Sign. Prediction and prosperity through technology, result the digital age. Are you worried about Y2K? Center. Content programs, audience design, evaluation, community. Great questions, thanks. A cave is a room where you can get inside of 3D files, wear a helmet, even move things around. Plan on pursuing in this environment. She says, we run it with a supercomputer and do things like docking small molecules to large ones. Tree, finance, anything with large 3D files of data. There's the audience. About a dozen or so people, I guess. Our primary goal is research communication. We use websites, etc., instead of releases to share what goes on here. Because they want to learn how to do this work. They come as interns and as paid programmers. Counter. What's your favorite project? Mini says, just to comment, Margaret Geller at Harvard is investigating the large-scale structure of the universe. This would be a great tool to help her visualize. Grads do want to learn. I hope to work with grad programmers and evaluators soon. The universe uh, falls as well as we would love to run a real model slide, so I'll move on. Imagine a virtual science center founded in a parallel dimension built by and for the worldwide community of avatars, or virtual beings.
place where you can swing on a star or explore the atomic maze of a complex molecule. Psi Center is a meeting place, a workplace, a showcase. The power of the Internet as a medium for informal science education aimed towards teens and young adults. We got protein folding, the Gene House project. Informal science education can be defined as extracurricular education that is self-directed and self-motivated. No grades, no credit, no degree. Just like life. Edutainment is a good word for it. And Hanson Science Centers are great places for it. Hands-on science centers. The first incarnation of Sci Center will be modeled after a cross between the 1939 World's Fair and a traditional science center. But there is no reason to constrain things within these models. This is just a jumping off point. Here we are, Mars. Again, we have an audience floating around, checking it out. We chose the 39 World's Fair because it represents so much to so many people. To me, it's the premiere for a new medium, TV, and a symbol of optimism towards technology directly linked to the Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. And to cartoons, merry melodies, I think, of mice getting assembly line haircuts and lining up to buy tickets for romantic spaceship rides to the moon, fun, futuristic portentous. I'm an animation freak. The molecule you see floating among heads was the first view of Psi Center. Psi Center looks different now, but I find evocative about this view that I would like to explore, something evocative I'd like to explore further. Next, a traditional science center typically has a strong community of supporters. There are sponsors for exhibits and programs, educators, architects, exhibit designers, guides, technical staff, managers, advisors, and evaluators. If we want to have a healthy, growing world, we will need to build a similar community to support Sci Center. This is always on my mind. Right now, our community of founding members includes architects, an exhibit designer or two, our guinea pig scientists, a science education professor, and there is a social anthropologist watching over my shoulder as I type. We're giggling. Evaluation will be an important component of the world and exhibit development processes. Particular research areas of interest include interactive exhibit design, and the effect of role playing on the visitor's experience. experimenting with the medium and a prototype world as proof of concept. We are starting to mesh layout and design with content areas. Somebody asks, anonymous role play?
definitely an influence of sex of avatar and behavior. I greatly admire the carefully organized approach that folks like Bonnie DeVarco take in building a world, and I hope to learn from her example. However, our concept is growing and changing as we go, and we are still at the bottom of the learning curve. jumped on stage is feeling her up we want to build a world where people can explore spaces devoted to different fields of research <laughs> some are pretty esoteric this is hi Nemo Sally for each exhibit a team of student builders and programmers will work with me and consult with researchers we will try and get an interesting angle on the science and come up with an innovative way of communicating about it. Students will range from kindergarten to 12 to grads, faculty, and community members, whoever can contribute. If we are lucky, we'll also be working with teams of high school students who will be giving us feedback on our work and also designing their own exhibits. Next, as I mentioned earlier, we have experience with 3D on the internet, but we have focused on Vermal. Virtual Worlds offers a whole new set of options and challenges. We plan to integrate the two. I have worked with a number of student programmers and CDC staff for more than three years now, developing a series of outreach science communication websites. try to stay at the bleeding edge of the technology. Sometimes it works. The sites have each incorporated 3D scientific visualizations. Rock and Roll is from an ongoing project in depth. The next feature to launch includes a 3D CT scan file of a portion of a lung. And you have a list of the U you have a list of the URLs on the slide. All are designed for Netscape. Any questions or comments before we move on? Time for the next question. Do you have any questions? introduce functionality in the AF for World or run parallel with your existing Vermal development? Uh, Nerdy questions. Sidetracked. Edupod. Edupod 2. Edupod 3. Okay, lots of good questions. Or bad questions. You know, like Howard, Howard Stern question. She's got me on her, on her shakes. <laughs> I guess so. 
keep Let pointing. Ask her if, uh, if she's working for Monsanto. What do you work for? <laughs> Who's paying you? Our work really falls within the realm of what is called the informal science education. In other words, she's on the fringe of education. This is not annoying mainstream. Too bad, but that's the way it goes. I'm going to go to our bird feed for a second. 11:47. Hundred and ninety seven and Alpha World only seventy nine. Avatar is now 100, 182 people, as opposed to 87 in Alpha World. 596 people total online in the world. And PST.
So we need to get Sun and um, Anita and I mean everybody should say hi to the to the cam. Definitely. So what do we do? Okay. Well, where are we? First of all. Let's, uh, okay. We are right in the webcast area at one south at right at ground zero with Digi Gardner. Who else is in here? Charles uh, Osman. Charles Osman. Let's get a close up of Charles. Where is Charles? Join him. No, he looks like he's a tourist. Yeah. Okay, so you can't join tourists. They don't show up. Access denied. Okay. Now I'm just saying hi, Charles. Haven't seen you since. Nanotech. Al should be here. No, they probably have the. Oh, there he is. He's over here. So Charles is one of our nanotech buddies. Huh? Right. Should I say, are you covering this for Mondo 2000? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For Mondo. Ah, now we turned into a woman. Charleston? Yeah. Well, excuse me. So, is this coming in live every five minutes or so? Maybe? Yeah, every few seconds you see a. a, a ah. <laughs> Where to next? Oh, that just happened. Nor I. Nor anyone else who are here. What, to Sukra? No, to Nanotech. So this is the main hallway where And Jim and where's Anita? Okay, are all here on Walnut. I have to tell you the cutest story about Walnut sometime soon. <laughs> Not have it has it out. So which is uh, Charles? Uh, what group are we talking about? We were, well, we're talking. He's, he's the woman looking <laughs> the other way. <laughs> the woman looking the other way. Now, here's another cam shot. Okay, yeah, let's so, get the cam shot. Yeah, okay. We're bringing it real close to the cam. All right. Oh, well, i got to have enough chat so I can see it. Okay. Get that cam. Where, where's this one from? Who's this person? Well, it must be at Bruce's. Friend of J.J. Webb? Did you go in there? No, that's not J.J. No, a friend of, I said. Friend of. <laughs> Could be. Could be Gary. Hey, everyone's gone to uh, Florida. To what? Oh, I've got to, I've got to help Lucio me. with his talk. You're gonna have to tear down. No, you're gonna have to watch me help yeah. him with the talk, or we can we can do that, and then I can quickly shift over and let Shard do this here while I. Help okay, him why don't you there. show us the setup? Show us what you're doing. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is go over to the education pod. Oh, look at that! It just shifted over. Another picture of Bruce. Bruce on the Probably showing the cam shot. 
and let's teleport to let's teleport to the edupod. And I need what I need to do is I'm behind the scenes here. We need to get people in here. So I'm gonna say hi, Lucio. I am ramming uh, Camilla to have her do an announcement. Your competition is tough. Oop, touch. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian slip. <laughs> uh, live webcast. Oops. <laughs> OK, so where, what do I need to do? I'm going to need to telegram. Indigo flight. So where are you uh, now, Anita? Okay, so you're hovering in the air in Grand Central Station. What's what's it looking like there? We've got two people here. Two uh -oh. people for the whole top of the whole. Pudsey, uh, so it must be his friend in Italy. Note taker still here. Note taker. Hardcore student. On digital cam with Al. So what are you saying? Because we can't quite read it. I'm here on a digital cam. Okay, I'm here on a digital cam with Al, Jim, Anita, and Son to assist you in your talk. In the talk. <laughs> ah! <laughs> your talk! I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! <laughs> <laughs> Your talk, I, I'm so tired. I love <laughs> their terrible times. <laughs> our talk. <laughs> I said to assist you in our talk. How many people are there, Bob? Uh, let's see. We had a large crew today, we, but right now <laughs> I just telegrammed uh, Camilla to do uh, a note Announce. to every announcement that w should come up on the immigration uh, as an immigration line. Immigration officer Lucio Pascarelli's talk. Your mine and our talk. <laughs> <laughs> No, who is the Pascarelli? What's uh, what's his thing? Lucio Pascarelli. Let's take a look at who this is over here. The big board. Here's the speakers. Mm -hmm. We had this morning Margaret Ryle. I mean Margaret Corbett from Cornell. This is Lu Lucio Pascarelli from Italy, and he is uh, with the food and food and drug. No. <laughs> Food and Agriculture <laughs> Organization of the United Nations. He's going to be talking about generating virtual worlds. Very interesting uh, talk on generating natural wor uh, worlds with using fractal algorithms, which is great. Vernon Reed talked in uh, on live. Michael Heim talked uh, in ACCD and spent a lot of time with Anita in there. And Derek Woodham of University of Cincinnati talked about the sculpture world <clears throat> that is, I think, about three years old now. Wow. I'm having a hard time moving around in here. Is it so full? How many people are now in the world? If, um, 
200? What? 200 people in the world? Let's or? see how many people are in the world over here. In the whole world, there's 607 users, and of all those users, how many are in? <coughs> I have 98, it's 114. So where are all the rest distributed around different 114. places? The big world, there's only one. Probably Alpha World's good for it, too. Yeah, I think they, they both are having a pretty big turnout. So is this the main? Okay, uh, Princess Tia. Princess Tia. Pollux Mattingly. Let me, let me grab. Starts now. Okay, I got a couple people over here. Now let's go back to. Is it Ground Zero that we were at? Yeah. Where's Bruce? We we'll just joined Bruce. Bruce was at Ground Zero before. Charles was Okay, good. He's smiling, so he's happy. We keep him happy. <laughs> <laughs> Derek would have. I was a little late on a few things, and I felt a little bit wary. Uh, <coughs> worlds. Let's go to. Ground zero of Av98. Okay, where is Digigardner? Pod two. Um, Lucio Pascarelli. Um, up of our two avatars. Two abs. No, our two abs. Well, where are you though? Where is he? Tell him to get on the. Um uh, tell them to stand. <gasps> okay, wait a minute. Let's get that from a crash. Can't wait. But. Let's so not spend too much time text and get into uh, What image. do you want it to do? I want it to be a good image. Um, I want to do uh, his avatar with the screens behind him. Um, we need to get uh, Bruce's face on his avatar with the, with the webcam behind him, not talk to him. Uh, the web. We can find where he is and just do it. We don't have to. He's too dyslexic to be able to follow directions. All right. Well. Yeah. All right. Well, where are you? Too. Where do you want? Look. I'll show you how to do it. Join. Oh, okay. Bruce. Did he? Did you join him? Where is he? Join, there he is there. Okay. Okay, let's see, there's his avatar. He's playing with the kids. Now let's look where where the big screens are. Okay, there they are behind him, see? Okay. Yeah, that's the kind of shot we want. Alright. Okay, get over here more. And here's with his avatar million uh, there you go. There he is. Okay, good, great. Hold that pose. Okay. Okay, hold that pose. Why are you? I'm trying to balance it. It's just okay. Up down. Great. That's how it has to give in the middle of it. Yeah. Hold that pose. Okay. <laughs> we are almost rolling. We are now. Action. <laughs> Okay. And I zoom in a little bit more on his face there, on the avatar. Okay. 
Okay, back up. Back up slowly. Okay, now slowly go up. A little bit. Up. Okay, good. And then back out. And ask Bruce. Can you start the seats on that? Okay. Okay. Now we're going to uh, also go in and get, now get close and do third person, get Bonnie's avatar next to her. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, what did you do? I got my avatar, but people okay. disappeared. Where is Bruce? Where'd you go? Ah, there he is. Uh huh. There you go. Okay. Can you back up more? Turn around a little bit. There you go. Okay. So. Okay. There we go. Back up. Back up. There. That's my shot. Ask right him to there. wave. Wave. Okay. 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 How about waving? Well, let's moon them. Where's Daphne? <laughs> Daphne, you're in no position to moon. Okay. <laughs> Is he waving? I don't see him waving. Raptor. Okay. We'll go back to first person, I guess. All right. We're going to let you go back to your. Uh, I, if I can show you. P P P P Bonnie, Bonnie, what is this? Okay, Bonnie. so what? What should we tell him now? To say wave. Say hi. Hey, hi. Hey, hey, let's get a picture of you sitting there while he's waving. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we are just say getting how to run many Capuccio. levels. Okay, everybody go over to uh, pod. Say everyone go to yeah. pod two. Lucio's going to follow us to pod two. Lucio's going to forget follow about this and. We will have the show. We have the definitive footage. We must. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, lost oh, the webcam. Bruce lost his webcam.